Welcome back. We are still working on our chapter seven homework five, and you can put these notes for these questions on the back or on another sheet of paper. So let's continue. Question six. Question six says, what 3D solid is formed by rotating a rectangle? Okay, so on a pencil, if we glued a rectangle and we spun it, as we spin it around, it appears that we would be making what we would call a cylinder. And it would look pretty blurry, and it might not be perfect, but it's definitely going to be a cylinder. So as I'm spinning this around, uh, you should imagine that, in fact, I'd be creating a cylinder. So when you spin, spinning a rectangle, creates a 3D cylinder. Okay. So back to my choices. A 3D solid is formed a cylinder. Now, let's review and take a few more notes. A cone is made, yes, but by spinning, we would have to spin a triangle. A sphere is made when we spin a circle. And a prism can't be made by spinning. Okay, great. Now, volume of a cone is about 564, and I don't see a pi, so this time I am gonna multiply by the pi if they want me to. The height of the cone is 11, okay. What is the radius to the nearest whole number? So you could do these couple ways. You could just try doing it like we did question one and two, and just plug in each one or we can use algebra to do this question backwards. So question number nine. Um, again, let's make sure we have the right formula here, the volume of a cone. So the volume of a cone is the area of the base, pi r squared h, but it's pointy, so we're gonna divide by three. So let's do our work on another piece of paper. The volume of a cone, pi r squared h, divide by three is a cone. Now we've been told the height here is 11 and the radius is I don't know. So whenever we have something we don't know, we can call it X or just keep it the letter, letter R. We're also told that the volume is about 564. All right, so here using substitution, we can put 564 where the V is. We don't have anything to put where the R is and the height is 11 and we're gonna divide everything by three. So now we think like we've thought back in algebra. All of this stuff is keeping R from being by himself. Okay, so the number one problem here is I have to, this whole thing is being divided by three. And the only way to get rid of that is to multiply both sides by three. Um, so when I do that though, something really nice happens. The threes go away on this side, which is why I did that to begin with. And on this side, let's use our calculator. 1692 is equal to pi r squared, and I still have that 11 there. Okay, now it's getting a bit better, uh, but I'd like to get rid of this 11 here. And so since 11 is being multiplied by these items, the only way to get rid of it is to divide by 11. So when I do that, the 11s go away, because 11 divided by 11 is 1, and that's why I did this to begin with. I knew that would make it go away. Um, okay, now I've got my calculator, so I'm just going to take this 1692 and divide by 11. Oh, I got a big ugly number. So it did say in the problem that it was about that. Um, and so I'm going to hold off on rounding, just keep this big ugly number there, and I still have pi times r squared. All right, so the pi is still keeping the r from being by himself, so I'm going to divide both sides by pi. And now my pi goes away. And I've kept that number in my calculator. And so now I'm going to divide by pi. 
All right, still a big ugly number. Four, eight, nine, six. One, eight, still radius. And last but not least, I still have that little two keeping R from being by himself. So if I take the square root of both sides, hmm, I get about seven. And that should make sense, because if this big ugly number was rounded up, I would get 49. And seven times seven is 49. So I'll go over here, and that's my answer seven. Now you could have done this a number of ways, that's just one way to do the problem. Next, a square pyramid, ooh, so a square, the area of a square is side squared. So that's the area of our base, and it has a volume of 100 cubic centimeters and a height of 12. What is the length of each side? Cool. Okay, so question 10. We have a square pyramid, so the volume of a pyramid is the base times the width times the height divide by 3. If it is a square base or a rectangle base. Now they've told us the volume is 100. They told us the height was 12. And they've told us to try to solve for one of the sides. Well, in a square, the base and the width are the same. In fact, in a square, we could call both of them just the same number because it's a square. So we could rewrite this side squared. And then again, in the formula, we've got to divide by 3. So this works out nice because 12 divided by 3 would be the number 4. So we have side squared times 4 equals 100. When I divide by 4 on both sides, I get the number 25. Ooh, I like that. When I take the square root, I get the number 5. So this should work out. And again, there's a couple ways to do this question, but this would have been one way to do it. I get an answer 5. Now, if you don't like doing questions backwards, multiple choice, you could have just calculated them until you got the correct answer of 100. That would have also worked. 11. A prism has a dimension of 2 and 8.3 and 9.6. What's the volume? Okay. So question 11 says a prism. So the volume of a prism is base times width times height. And they gave us the dimensions 2 by 8.3 and 9.6. When I multiply all those together, it says, what is the approximate? And so if I was to round that, I'd get that. And that's my answer choice B. Cool. Next question. A prism has a radius of three and a half, height of three, 10 and three quarters. What is the approximate volume? So it looks like my answer choices are in decimals. So it's going to be okay to change things into decimals. Okay, so question 12. A prism. So a prism is just base times width times height. Oh, I think this is a typo. This has to say the word cylinder because prisms don't have radiuses. So sorry about that. I think that that should say cylinder. Ooh, okay. Oops. So pi r squared h is a cylinder. And it says the radius here was three and a half. So I'm going to put 3.5. And the height is 10 and 3 quarters, so that's 10.75. So if you had 10 and 3 quarter dollars, that's $10.75. All right, so let's put this in a calculator. And the answers are not in terms of pi, so we're going to just keep going here. So we got pi, pi times 3.5 times 3.5 times 10.75, and we get an answer. 413.7. 413.7, that's my answer choice C. Cool. 13. 
Which one is not a cross section of a square pyramid? So let's think about this, a square pyramid. Okay, so as part of your homework, I'd ask that you try to draw out a square pyramid. Uh, we'd start with a parallelogram, make a dot, go straight up, and extend the ends. So that's what a square pyramid looks like. And it said, which one is not a cross section? So I would ask that you draw at least three of them. Um, because that's how people get these questions right, is to understand these cross sections. So a square would definitely be a cross section because that would be a horizontal one. A rectangle. Hmm. I think it would be hard to get a rectangle. A triangle. We can definitely get a triangle if we cut it straight up and down. So you notice a vertical cross section of any pyramid is going to be a triangle. And then a point. I don't really like this idea of a point because I haven't really crossed into the shape. But I venture to say that I don't know how to get a rectangle here. So I'm going to select the answer as a rectangle. All right, definitely we like these two. Um, and a point, I guess you could think of it as if you levitate it on the very top, but I would probably take either answer, rectangle or point. Thanks for joining us.